All right, guys, so now we're going to get into assembling this head right here. I'm going to start out with the valves and uh, get a little grinding compound on here. Well, lapping compound. I ain't grinding nothing. I just put a few small dabs on there, nothing crazy. Sink it down. Take your little brake clean and go in here and spray that out. That way you can get the compound off of the seat. Do the same with the valves. These valves wipe back down. And maybe you can see. Yeah, there you go. You can see the little line that it's created there. And that's where that's going to seat down to. It's just a good clean surface. Mated together really nice. And, uh, you know, it just helps create a good seal. Now I'm going to flip this thing up. We're going to put a camshaft seal on it. Again, lubricating it. Just because it's a good habit to do. Next, we're going to move on to the valve seals. Alright, so it's just as simple as laying it right on top of your valve seat giving her a push bam there it is now this is the old head that came off of it uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the valve springs in it and valves. Give these a good spraying off here. Might be a little hard to see watch me do this, but and there it is. All you do is push down. Sometimes they'll pop back out on you, but you just push down until you feel them lock in. And then, always give them a couple of pushes. It's good to go there. So now we're going to finish up putting valves in. And there you have it. All four valves ready to go. Four valve springs and collets, and you can see how the collets have locked under the top of the valve there to keep it in place. Um, once this engine has its first couple of minutes of running, those collets will center themselves, and uh, you'll be ready to go then. All right, <clears throat> got a block back on the bench dirt here once you get your dial pins put back in their place you're gonna get your head gasket and on the head gasket the word up is right at the bottom here okay so it's almost impossible to put this on wrong if you flip it over it is not readable 
I, I don't I wouldn't be able to say tell that that says up so when you get it over here you're gonna see it's punched out and it says up on it you want to make sure that that's literally facing upwards on this block There's all my head bolts, okay? So four of the bolts are the same. Two of them are short, and one of them is long. Okay, so the long one will go right dead in the center on the inside of the valve train. Two of the next shortest down will go on the outer corners of the head inside the valve train area okay and then turn this around here the next medium length go to the outside corners on the outside of the cylinder head and then you have two shorter bolts that go in the center on the outside of the cylinder head And that would be your head bolts get them snug down you go back and torque them down I do 230 to 240 inch pounds uh, when I do these head bolts maybe it seems a little tight but I would rather them be um, good and torqued right between the 230 and the 240 then be at the lower end of let's say 220 or 225 so um, it's just my preference it gives me more confidence that I actually got a good tight seal here Right, see there at the the second time I went down the center bolt ended up losing its torque so when I went back with it I retorqued that down and then I hit everything else good and flat nice and sealed I know that this motor is going to be having no issues in the head gasket area get our rocker arm assemblies put back together and you're gonna have rocker arm be sure you put it in the right direction Then you'll have spacer. Then your next rocker arm. Then you'll have your spring. Then your next rocker arm. Once you get the third rocker arm in, you're gonna throw the spacer in between this one and a little tap try not to go too far because then it'll be hard to get this one in which I did do okay the last rocker arm is in okay so it's, there's your valve train all put together it's very important to remember that your your um, rocker arm guide pin gets below the surface of the camshaft seal plate here uh, because you don't want it to be rubbing possibly causing a problem of you know damaging the surface and metal and stuff like that so just keep that in mind when you're putting this together and now we'll get we'll get our camshaft cover plate
I'm gonna take this to the wire wheel and get it nice and cleaned off. Be right back. All right, got the camshaft seal plate all cleaned up. Get our gasket. There is a specific bolt that goes in this area here because it is meant to hold the coil bracket as well. It's, I've never seen it anywhere but on this very far side on the top. And then you're just going to have three shorter bolts that go in here. <clears throat> in the rest of the locations. I don't want to keep letting the little keyway that goes in your crankshaft that holds the fan to the crankshaft. I don't want to keep it floating around anywhere. I want to make sure it's not lost. All right guys, so I got my fan back on. The reason why I put my fan back on is because what it's gonna do is when you turn to work on the timing side okay when you turn it around to work on the timing side here right here is your counterbalance shaft okay it's got a keyway in it and that's obviously to hold the gear in position when the motor is rotating so this keyway and I will go a little more in detail in just a moment about this, but this keyway has to be facing upwards for it to be in the proper time. Okay, so I have one here at the top, bolt there, bolt down here at the bottom. I'm in cover, there's a little uh, punch out right here. And on the block, there's a little punch out right here. It's just a, an alignment tab, if you want to call it. You'll have two of the really short bolts. They go in here, holds that together, give them a good pop. Alright, so you'll have the bottom gear, and you notice it's got the keyway position there. It's also got two holes here, and as I stated, once you get it on, that keyway should be pointing directly straight up and down. Not off to the side in either direction and not down. Because if you're down, you're out of time. If you're to the side at all, you're out of time. If you're off just a slight bit, you're one tooth out of time. And that's not a good thing. So now, I'm gonna get the upper cam gear, okay? See, it's got two holes here and one in the center. Okay, well, the backing plate here has a notch cut out in it. This small hole at the top of the gear has to line up with this notch. Right now, my cam gear, uh, a little tip as well on the back of your cam gear where the cam has a pin that sticks off of it okay that pin goes in here be sure you check this notch in the back of the cam gear because if it's wallowed out at all I mean it doesn't take much it will throw the timing off when this motor goes to run so right now my cam gear is out of time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll, roll this gear over until I get to where that notch is lined up with this dot. And then it has a special bolt with a big washer for the gear up top. I'm going to just hand tighten this down for now. Okay, and then there's uh, uh, basically what this this piece here does. It's it's basically a guide for the belt. That way the belt don't flop off the gear. And then the bolt has a washer to go with it that'll cover up that. 
Now, now I'm looking at this and it looks like my gear is off on the bottom, I mean ever so slightly, and ever so slightly can cause a problem. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make sure that that's straight up and down. I'm going to line the two holes up here with the two holes on the gear. It's really no importance there, but it's just something I like to do. Okay, now I'm going to grab my tensioner. Okay, so here is your tensioner pulley. Now this can only go on one direction. Here's your tensioning spring. So on the back side of the tensioner, you can see this has a raised edge of, of the center of the tensioner pulley. So the spring has a uh, pin that sticks off here and a pin that comes up here. The piece that sticks off needs to go in the hole right there, like, like so, okay? Then you're going to grab your tensioner bolt, which is going to have a pretty hefty shank there on it. Then it'll have a washer. And then you're going to stick the bolt through there. Okay, the, the time, timing backing plate has a, what I like to call a little arm here, that this pin is going to bump up against and create the tension on the belt that's needed. I only finger tighten this so that way I can get the movement out of the belt when I need it to tension up. So let me go grab a belt. Okay, so let's throw this belt on here. And the tensioner back around. Now I'd like to take this back off after I get the belt slid on just to be sure that my keyway is still upright and it is not so I, I, I kicked it off when I started to pull this up here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this belt back off just the top okay so I'm going to check up here that looks good. I'm going to bring my belt back around. Bring my tensioner back up. Bring my belt back around the tensioner. And then I'm going to come back here and grab my fan. And I'm going to turn that back to the top dead center. And then I'm going to roll the belt back into place. You can see there it kicked off again. Straight on, it is literally off less than a tooth. I know it doesn't look like it, but I promise you it is. That's a good shot right there. It's off. Uh, less than a tooth and I am working on trying to get that out of here sometimes this happens um, it's just how it rolls when you're doing timing on these things but uh, we'll get it just stay with me that's got it that time you put your little guide plate back on here And then you just tighten it all up. At this point, it doesn't matter if it moves because it's all together. Um, it's going to move when you tighten everything up anyway. But we're in time, so that's all that matters. Now we can take our fan. And spin her around. 
All right, that's uh, time and mark down, time and marks down. Bring it back around. And bring it to the time and mark there. Time marks up. Pistons are on top dead center. That's easy to see when you look down through your spark plug holes. So, timing job is complete there, guys. Now you can throw your cover back on. That's complete in the timing side. Okay, so here we have our oil filter. And then there are three bolts with a lock washer on them that are similar to the ones that you put in the oil pump plate and then you have your sealing o-ring o-rings gonna go right here in this groove like so just match up the holes Where you going? Come back here. Alright, that'll do it for that. So here's your valve cover. I'm going to go ahead and get this gasket here replaced real quick. Spray this off with some brake clean, get all the particles out of it good. And then we're going to pull the gasket, old gasket out, toss it to the side. Throw our new gasket in here. We're going to get the covers here put on. And then our metal heat shield on the back. Just stay with me. Alright, so you have your front cover for the cylinder head. Okay, so there's a notch right here that your oil sensing wire will clip into. Alright guys, so there's going to be a link in the description to our valve adjustment, uh, but to do the pre-MCI engines, the only tools you're going to need is a 10 millimeter wrench. A uh, flathead screwdriver and a four thousandths filler gauge. And to do the MCI engines, the only thing you need to substitute for is the flathead screwdriver. And all you will need is a pair of pliers, really, and uh, that'll get you that'll get you where you need to be. So just keep that in mind, and uh, we're gonna move on. Well, there we go, it, guys. Fan shroud put back on, valve cover put back on. Everything except for the exhaust manifold and as I said earlier, I got to do a little work on the exhaust manifold bolts where the muffler bolts to it. We had them break off so get that fixed up. I hope this helps some of you out with all the questions you these guys have been calling us about for these motor rebuilds. Um, hopefully this install video gets you going um, step by step. Just take your time when putting it back together and, and you'll be good. So. Hit that subscribe button, like these videos, get them notification bells going so y'all get these new videos that we got coming out. Um, keep watching, guys. Thanks a lot. Peace out.